And welcome to this installment of Rushed Vibes. I am Jessica, Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by David, Marriage is Difficult, Rushed Vibes Rushing. (laughs) I knew that wasn't going to take long. (laughs) I figured I'd just rip off the band-aid and... uh, yeah. And then we could just jump right into it. I and, appreciate it. And now now we've we've dealt with the elephant in the room. The elephant is still in the room, but we don't have to pretend it's not I mean, there. Not really. I don't think the elephant's in the room anymore. It's it's because we got it we got it out. We we discussed Dumbo is flying, flapping his ears uh, around the room. For those of you who are not Dumbo. aware of what we are speaking of in subtext, please make sure you listen to the previous episode where episode we discussed eight. episode eight. Ocho, fresh vibes. Where we discussed marriage being difficult. Well, we posed the question, is marriage difficult? And from there we had, I guess, opposing viewpoints is a very opposing viewpoint. PG way of describing um, it. It was almost a filibuster up in here. Um, but it was a, it was a good conversation. Now I know where my husband stands. Um, and we'll see how much longer. She's being dramatic for the camera because she knew where I stood before we even, <laughs> we even sat down to record but now the, I know the episode. He, now I know the concrete has settled. Um, so we'll, we'll see how much longer this rushed vibes ride is going to go. <laughs> 300 episodes. Who you mean like that couple on HGTV? They got divorced. They used to do the flip flipper flops or whatever, and then they got divorced, but they were still like oh Tarek up. and yeah and Christina, I think yeah. And now he's out of the yeah. picture, and she's like doing it by herself. But anyway, oh really? Uh, yeah. yeah. See, I, I used to be really heavy on HGTV, and just fell fell out of it. I think it's around the time that we got married. Actually, mm-hmm. I used to watch all the time when I was a bachelor, and then when we got together, I no, just, we were still watching it married. Oh, were we? I thought like, that was I'd flip say or flop. Like the first, the first year, or I thought that was lo- love it or listed. I, I I just blanket HGTV. Oh, it just it would get to a point where back when we had like legit cable, um, as opposed to apps. Goodness. Well, that's when that's before the world started to cut. You know, I was I'm an actual yes, we know. trendsetter for we cutting know. the cord. You're a- I was a huge huge advocate <sighs> of it online and Facebook, and I had people leaving. Uh, post on my Facebook page like, hey, what are you doing with this? How do you like this you service? Were, How do you you actually this were service? pioneering that. Um, well, I, we had we piloted probably like two or three services. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of them was PlayStation View. Yep. The other one was, I don't know, I think it was DirecTV now and then they changed AT&T. Yeah, but there was another one that we did. Times. Oh, it started with an S. Oh. Um, Slapbox. No. <laughs> That's not it. It uh, sling, sling, sling TV. Sling. When sling yeah. first dropped, you were on there. So yeah. I will give you credit for that. You are definitely quite the pioneer when it comes to new innovation. What is the term? There's a term I remember studying. Type it. something. Um, yeah, the people who like are the first ones to do it. I think I'm yeah. like the third, the third group. Um, yeah, early, I, early yeah. adopter. Yeah, that's the word. Yeah. Um, but I default into it because you you always jump into trends. So um, I'm trying to keep you fresh, baby. Thanks. I don't. I don't mind being a little stale. Um, <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we used to go really hard on HGTV. It was. I think HGTV is a an adult rite of passage. Like you really haven't hit adulthood until you get to a point where you're you're thinking, oh, what should I watch? And you go. Your instinct is to go to HGTV, or you realize you've been watching an HGTV marathon for some random yeah. show for multiple hours on a Saturday. That yeah. that's an adult rite of passage. I, th- I think every adult gets to a point in their life where they are just all about HGTV. So um, yeah, back to our marriage is difficult. Segueing back, but yeah, segueing away from that. Um, I just wanted to say, you look fascinating tonight. You got the you got the lip, you got the lipstick. You got the, <laughs> do, got the little. Do crop. I look like I've got like a question mark? Got the little crop. Crop tizzle. Crop, crop oh, top. I'll, I'll expose a little bit of ab. No, no, um, no. You know we know, we know you're in the gym. It's, it's okay. A, you don't it's, have to. It's, it's not. Show it's, off. A, it's a it's a cushioned ab. My abs are it's okay. You look my, good. My my trainer. No, you like, you look 
Thank you. You look, you look really? good. Really? Oh, yeah. so this that. is actually going to be a 15 minute Rush Vibes episode because we've got some things to do later. But sleep. Uh, yeah, that comes later. Um, it comes afterward. Any- <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, what are you? What, what, what I- are you having? I am drinking a French 75, which is one of my favorite cocktails. Um, it is lemon juice, simple syrup. I made mine with vodka. And Let me guess. The first one was made in, Fran- in France. No. Oh, then why is it called a French whatever? I don't know. I just felt like saying no to you. It's probably, oh. It was probably made in France in like 1875. It's terrible. Um, and then a little bit of sparkling wine. That's, that's what I'm drinking. Uh, I'm having Johnny Walker black label and I'm not having much, but keep walking. That's that's what I got. Cheers. Shall we toast to freedom? We're already free. (laughs) It's a Hamilton reference. Come on, though. Anyway, how are you doing? I'm doing great. It's um, it's Monday night. We just finished watching The Bachelor. Uh, we I don't know if we're if we're getting into that here or not. We may we might I don't, and it's not planned, but we tend to always find our way to the there, uh, one, one, one way or another. The girls are great today. Had another another teacher work day, so our our five year old was not in kindergarten in the month of January. She's she has gone to school one Monday, one Monday out this of the whole month, one Monday. And, we're, and we will ask her like, "Hey, do you realize you're only going to go to school?" On Monday, once this month, you're like, yeah, of course. She's so nonchalant yeah. about it. We even made up um, a no school on Monday song, and she sang it too. <laughs> she sang oh, yeah, it to her class. We were like, we're really good at making up songs, but um, I don't want to sing it in case somebody steals it. And then I yeah, ask, copyright. I see it on TikTok. Oh, and I'm like, Whoa. speaking of speaking of copyright and, and all that stuff, uh, these we're not sponsored by any of these uh, companies who make these beverages. We're just connoisseurs and. We used to get paid by. <laughs> well, you did. I, I didn't. I'm but not Rush Vibes is not in any way affiliated with like Johnny Walker. But Rush Vibes is very much so open. I was going to say this is this is one opportunity. This is one time I will jump on the the uh, panhandling bandwagon. Get in early and say if anybody is uh, you know you want those a couple of dollars. You know we'll we'll take them we'll and we will proudly some, we'll advertise some graphic t shirts. I would love to. I would love something local. Oh yeah, like a local. Whiskey, vodka. So uh we we you see us. We're here. Soon. Come find us. Soon it'll it'll um, happen. Slither into the DMs. All in, all uh, in due time. All um but yeah, time. it's it has been you didn't ask me how I'm doing, but how, how are you doing? I'm sorry. I, I am also doing great. We have You look great. Thank you. I really didn't do much to my appearance. No, you did. Um That's, you don't have to do a lot. Just, I I put on a little powder. Is that what y'all girls do when you Yes. Yes. Yes, queen. Queen. Yes. Um, come through. Come, lipstick, come through. Come through. Yes, and this is actually a black-owned lipstick company. Plug them. Called Plug them. Lip Bar. You can get them in Target. You can get them online. It is... Oh, you get them in Target. Yeah. Uh, it is yeah. really good. Um, it doesn't come off, so I've been drinking my drink. Um, it... Oh yeah. snap! It doesn't come off. No, no, it does not come off. So, uh, and it's a popping red. It's not a color I would normally gravitate to, but Looks. I, you know, you you try different things. So this is like the second or third time I'm wearing it. But yeah, uh, I'm doing great. Like you said, the girls are great. Um, our youngest, our baby, our last born, she just turned one. Got a one year old. Um, which is crazy. Uh, it, it it makes sense that a year has gone by, but in the same respect, it feels it feels so fast and so slow at the same time. And I yeah. think elements of life make it seem slow. So like the pandemic, and it's like we're still in lockdown and you waking know, up every night. Every she morning. slept last night. She slept last. Yeah, she well, did. She's in her. She was in her twelve month regression. So um, she was very passionate about um, not sleeping at night. Uh, but I think I think we are we might be over that hurdle. But yeah, she's she's one, and she has developed this huge personality. She's very strong willed, <laughs> and she doesn't take anything from anybody. And her poor sister, who just. <laughs> 
has to tolerate her. Um, yeah. it, it's very interesting seeing the dynamics. So I am happy about that. Um, she, we're, we're all healthy. Uh, we're fed. We, we have a roof over our heads. And, you know, we have happy children who make messes. That's, that's probably my only real grievance in life. Um, and a day is not complete if I haven't fussed at our oldest about making a mess. And then Sovereign will jump in there and babble and baby talk. And I'm like, look, I can come for you too. So, you know, I try to keep a balance. And I uh, I, I usually attack her. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's been a good start to the week. So as long as I can get consistent sleep, I'm not going to complain. And a pretty good start. Relatively speaking to the year. Yeah. You know, uh, Sovereign, our youngest Sovereign, we call her Savi for short. Having her birthday this past weekend, it kind of, uh, subconsciously, I kind of slipped into just a whole going back over the last year. And, and we may have touched on this last, probably not the last episode, but the episode before it, episode seven, about how uh, terrible you know, if you read the news and, and, you know, how many celebrity, big celebrity deaths we had and how many Americans died, it was just like, oh, 2020 was just a horrible year. And for most cases it was, for most people it was, but no, it was a conversation you had, you were talking to me about, um, our baker when you went to pick up cupcakes, uh, how, you know, so a lot of people suffered tragedy last year, um, or just, you know, fell in hard times because of the pandemic and you, that just tends to be all that's at the forefront of your mind. But you look back and it's like, oh, well, you know, we had a lot of great moments as well. Like we, our daughter was born mm-hmm. in, in 2020 and I was able to be in the hospital at the at the time of, of birth. And I don't, and as you know, restrictions have tightened in the hospitals because of the amount of just procedural, just because of, mm-hmm. of protocol uh, for, for COVID and then, you know, just the amount of, of patients that are in because of the virus. I, I don't know if hospitals are restricting, um, that only mothers be allowed in the, in the delivery room and, and not fathers. But luckily that wasn't something that we had to, to deal with. Uh, she was born early enough that I was, I was able to be there. And then we had family and friends come by and, um, and you know, I changed jobs. Uh, our, our five-year-old started kindergarten, um, and she has a late birthday, so that's that's pretty significant. She started at four. She started at, at four. We've uh, had people close to us uh, or people who were, were cordial with, you know, launch initiatives and then launch businesses. And, and, you know, it's it's you know, it just it just helped put things in perspective for me. And even though we're in we're starting and in, going into a new year and I know a lot of people just kind of hope that, you know, a, a switch would flip and. COVID would be magically gone and vaccines would be accessible to everybody. And those are things that we're still dealing with um, from day to day. You know, it, it just helped me realize that it's not all doom and gloom, mm-hmm. you know, and, and a lot of life is how you look at it and in and, and your perspective, you know, you can either look at things glass half empty or, or glass half full. And I, and I tend to be glass half full, even though, you know, just being a father and a husband, I could kind of get caught up in, in just decisions and things that, I have to make to Man kind of help, stuff. kind of help guide us as a as a family. I, I tend to lose sight of that, but this past weekend helped put all that in in perspective for me. So, yeah, I would I would definitely agree with that. Um, you know, there has been a lot of loss and pain and unfortunate suffering, but if you really take a moment, and I'm, it might be hard for some, but if you do take a moment, you can find you know a little blessing that has been you know for the most part this whole year you've you went you took paternity leave and then you went back to work and you're working remotely and so unless the girls slept over their grandparent one of their grandparents homes they've seen you every single day and we that's us transitioning from david being on the road three weeks out of a month and coming home and Salas and i are like so uh, where are you like, going what, next? Why, why are you here? Uh, he would come <laughs> home on Friday and he'd be like, yay, daddy's home. And then Saturday would be like, yay, daddy's home. And then like by Saturday at 445, it's like, so. Where are you going? Where are you going next? Like, and you're leaving Sunday night or, or Monday? Or then when he'd have a week where he was local and it'd be like, oh, so you're, st- you're still here. 
you, you don't have anywhere to go. And Talos would be like, oh, well, mommy said I can do this. And, and he's like, well, I said no. And then she's like, but who are you? <laughs> who are you to, to establish rules? But anyway, um, so our, our, our children have been able to see you and be with you every single day. Um, and I actually heard a segment, I believe it was on NPR, where dads were talking about how the pandemic allowed them to be better fathers because they were able to be present and be involved and, and, see what their wives are dealing with on a daily basis and have to mm-hmm. contribute to that. So do we enjoy virtual learning? Some days it's cute. A lot of days it's not. Um, there's a lot of bickering. It's a constant, and, it's a constant whew, struggle back. You know, um, a challenge of, of willpower between every a five I think, year old and, and us. <laughs> every free space, every surface has been used as a class space at some point of time and it's been next to impossible to settle her in one space but i i think of moments where i can hear her interacting and words that she knows that i wouldn't have a reason to know because you don't get to see the classroom like that so yeah i hate that she's not able to our daughter's not able to develop a relationship with her classmates or her teacher in in person but i remember it was something as small as her her first teacher um who unfortunately left um she she asked the class what does independent mean and Solace answered it, and I happened to be in this room, and she was in the office, and she said, well, independent means you can do it by yourself. And I was like, I didn't know she knew what independent meant. And I wouldn't have known that if she was in a classroom. I wouldn't have known yeah. about that interaction. Beyonce was somewhere smiling. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so so that's... that's they were out there proud somewhere that is a blessing that i count where it's i i feel i've been able to be part of her kindergarten process and is it ideal no uh, and are there some days where i'm like i i am tired of you coloring on walls i am tired of you cutting paper i am tired of you wasting paper uh, i wish we could send you somewhere but the blessing in it is we were able to be a part of that and you know even recently, David happened to be down here and they were doing something in class and we had like a moment where she answered a question and I think we were both just so just proud of her and we, we got to experience that moment together and Savi quickly jumped in and like took, took that moment away from us. But yeah, so I mean, there's it, it can be hard sometimes, but there are blessings in just about any situation sometimes. So yeah, I'm... I'm feeling good. I'm feeling, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm feeling good. I do have my moments where I, you know, I wake up and I'm like, is this, is this COVID just a dream? And it's, it's not a dream, no, it's but, very, um, very real and very, very present. Yes. Um, I, I read a headline today. Uh, one of the, one of the, uh, the, the CEOs of one of the company, I think it might've been Moderna. Uh, I just read the headline. So I have typical, you know, typical culprit these days. I just read the headline. I didn't read the article, <laughs> but the headline was a quote from him uh, that, you know, we're going to have to live with COVID-19 in some form or fashion yeah. for forever. You know, I, it's, I it's, figure, here, it's here to stay. We're, we're, a life will have to adjust to COVID. It's, it's not going to adjust to us. Yeah. So I figure it's the new flu. Uh, and I hate to say it like it's, it's like something that's popping, but you know, you have different strains of the flu and I I think it's just going to be one of those things where you have the it's COVID season, like it's Corona, like whatever we're going to call it. Um, it's COVID-19 season. COVID season. It's, it's Corona-19. I don't know. They're going to pick a, <laughs> They're going to pick a name for it and it's just going to be, you know, get your get your Corona shot, get your flu yeah. shot, get a dual shot. Um I hope they figure out a way that it doesn't have to be a lockdown. Uh, I don't know if it's just our immune systems are going to have to, you know, learn how to, to combat it. But I, I do anticipate well, that it's, it's here. It's you know, if you look at the, in. if you look at the survival rate, it's, it's extremely high. And I think, but what gives most people pause is that because it's a, it's a relatively new virus mm-hmm. um, or a new strain, um, you don't really know what the, the long term effects are. Uh, and it just hasn't yeah. been a lot of time, has been enough time uh, for us to have any like real true studies. Um, I know I, I followed 
uh, you know, I'm, anyone who knows me knows I'm, I'm really big into the the NBA. So there are a couple of players who who had caught it earlier in the summer, um, and they're they're in the the uh, demographic of of people who get it, where you really don't have to worry because they're mm-hmm. m- most of them have been asymptomatic, but some of them have shown symptoms. One particular player for the I think for the Orlando Magic had caught it and had some compli- had some symptoms, uh, but then was fine, and then tried to go like to work out or go, you know, report for training camp. And then he actually had to take some time away because some of the symptoms came back. Cool. So, um, or he was dealing with some lingering effects, excuse me. So, excuse me, I think that's just like the biggest question mark probably, mm-hmm. um, other than, you know, those those uh, age ranges of, of citizens who, you know, are, are the most susceptible to high risk. Like you know, my my parents um, and, and people in, in their generation, um, it's just you know what what are the long term effects of it for anyone who's had it, um, and so I think that can get kind of scary for people who have mm-hmm. had it and have been asymptomatic and haven't gotten tested. Like you don't know that you had it, so like five years from now, you just, <laughs> you just start, here. <laughs> what's this? And then you're like, oh, well, you've got traces of. Like, I, like I, I'm just curious how we, it's gonna how, we how it's going to develop, and you know it's already mutating. There's a, uh, a, a new strain in that originated. I don't know if it originated in Europe or if it, that's just there's, where it was identified. There's a UK version, there's a South African version, and a Brazilian version. It's like waxes now. Like you got so your like, Brazilian wax, you got your. So it's like COVID extended universe. It you is got different. COVID it is and, like and different, different different wines, different series, like. COVID, um, the UK series. So COVID. it's definitely, so the Moderna CEO was right then. It's definitely here. Yeah, it's here to stay. Here to I, stay. I think myself, um, I'm very curious. Granted, the vaccine is, is making momentum. I'm curious what moves are being made in terms of actually treating it. Like what, like, and I know that's something, and I did hear that part of a conversation about that on NPR. And I think Dr. Fauci um, may have mentioned it. Dr. Know. Fauci, you got, Fauci. His, he Fauci. Got, his, he got his glow back. Fauci's back. <laughs> Fauci got his groove. He got his glow back. Did you see the split screen video of him? Uh, somebody compared when he was at like one of the Trump press conferences, the one where he, where he was. Oh, touching and then, his face. And then they showed his first press conference with the Biden administration. He had a glow. Like literally, like out of a toxic relationship into he a was into a, a healthy one. Yes, Fauci. Yes, skin was just, just vibrant and everything. Just Fauci, like, okay, poppin'. Fauci, come come through with the Fauci Sna- drip. Fauci got a snap back. Yes, <laughs> yes. This is what toxic the, toxicity is uh, bad for the. System. I don't even. I, I don't think he has glasses on either. He might took. Got oh, some, he took the glasses. I think. On? He, I don't think he had glasses on. Like he was a new new man. You know, from from ATL, no, new new man. <laughs> well, congrats, new new. Congrats, Doctor Fauci. Uh, I'm gonna go back to calling him Tony. I feel like we've Tony. earned the right to call him <laughs> Tony Fauci, Tony F. Um, but yeah, I, I'm curious when they're gonna start because I mean they've got like, is it Mucinex or Zyzo? They have like flu medication, so eventually they're gonna have to yeah. come up with like actual treatments. Well, you for know, a lot of COVID, a lot of the. Um you know, a lot of social media studies <laughs> have said, and, and this is, and I, I believe this is true. I, I believe this to be true uh, from other reputable sources that, uh, you know, vitamin D. Get your vitamin D and, you know, that that can help in terms of your immune, your it's overall sunlight. I- immune system. Yes. Um, Just wanted to clarify. Well, I mean. Well, Stop. No. Nope. Stay. What? Stay the course. Stay, what? Stay the. Stay what? the course. So we almost deviated. Stay the course. What are you talking about? Just, I just, just wanted to clarify. Uh, you know, I'm just saying, sunlight like sunlight or vitamin that, D that's supplements a, in a bottle. No, by me saying vitamin D, that provided a Google, Googleable moment. <laughs> Googleable <laughs> moment for people. Oh, vitamin D. What are sources? Five sources of yes. vitamin. Because it's America, we're not going to act like everybody knows where they can get vitamin D from. You know, we're one of the more ignorant probably nations in in all the world You'd be surprised i recently watched a clip where people were asking english people what language what is the american language and they were saying american so there's hope you know what they meant though <laughs> there's hope you know what they meant yeah um yeah so i you know i you know i watch a lot of bill maher and uh he's obviously probably one of the more polarizing 
figures here here in the country. Probably like half the country hates him, half the pro, half the country loves him. There's really no in between. Um, he's been really big on, you know, we have probably the worst eating habits here. We're the oh, most absolutely. obese country. And he's like, how come none of the top health professionals are telling people are talking about, hey, it's important to like take care of yourself, mm-hmm. get exercise, better eating habits, eat the right kind of foods, like try not to be obese. He said like there's a lot of health officials who won't say that because, you know, we, we live, which may actually be a good segue into our, our main topic is, you know, we're, we're so afraid of saying the wrong things mm-hmm. because then there's, there could be out, there could be a backlash and outrage and social media and, and, and bad press. So, and you can get canceled. So maybe that's why a lot of the top health professionals aren't are saying that, but he said, you know, having a good immune system and, you know, cause you see people who are asymptomatic tend to fit a certain description. Um, that would make them less susceptible to to the virus and then as well as other other diseases and mm-hmm. so interesting to see where where this all goes obviously we we try to do our part when we go out we wear a mask we try to social distance we only associate with those who we consider in our bubble who are worthy who are in our worthy bubble uh from time to time we'll we'll go out but you know anytime we're going somewhere we try to go somewhere that observe social distancing rules for for restaurants and whatnot so you know, we'll just see. We just got to keep trucking along and, and live this COVID wait, life. <laughs> this COVID life until the vaccine becomes readily available. And, you know, we can get back to the semblance of, of life as we know it. I don't know if we'll ever get all the way there, but maybe just. I was just thinking randomly. I was like, I just miss being able to just go out. <laughs> like, and not having and to I, think I, twice. And I can. Like, I can go out. No one's stopping me from going out. It's just, there's that. Mm, is it worth Do it? Do I really need to? Is it worth it? Yeah. Yeah, gonna keep going. Let me work it. If I'm about to act down, flip it and reverse it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna take a quick break and we'll be back. Alrighty. And we're back. We finished we finished the, the Missy song in case anybody's wondering. Yeah, because we know it word for word. We even did the totally, dance moves totally that, did. that little girl did. She was in that video, right? What video? Work it. Oh, that, uh, I don't know. Yeah, sure. She might have been. Because there was a season she was in like every Missy, every Missy video. Um, but yeah, you were you were talking about just health and you never really want to get me on a health tangent because I'm very much so. Oh, my God. Don't, I mean, I'm already started, so I can't oh say don't God. get me started. But I, I am very passionate about natural remedies uh, and just overall being healthy and doing your research and finding out sacrifices. <laughs> Sacrificing what? She's like, David, we're, we're having a baby. Go, go find a goat. <laughs> anyway, his throat um, and so, offer it up. Okay, you are not Abraham. <laughs> okay, um, offer up but the goat. I mean, I really think people should make a valiant effort to know their food, know where it comes from, uh, because there are foods that we eat here. That are also sold in Europe, but the recipe has to be changed because European health standards are completely oh, different. Way, way more stringent. Uh, they, I mean, artificial colors. I mean, yeah, we were. Um, I, I went to have a uh, cigar night with a couple cousins of mine and uh, my my brother, and we were talking about how cigarettes, what they, all the the random trash that they have in them here, uh, they they don't have. Um, over over in Europe, mm-hmm. like their their regulations are, are way more strict. And even um, I think he said like acetaminophen. I guess it's Tylenol, right? Or yes. ibuprofen. Ibu- mm-hmm. um, you can, like you can't just like go walk into a store and get it. Like it has to be prescribed by a doctor uh, because you know it can have damn. If you use it in excess, it can damage like oh, yeah. your kidneys Absolutely. or liver or something like that. But yeah, I, I didn't realize like how strict they are. But that could be a good thing, especially when it comes to to health health standards and, and types of uh, ingredients that are in things mm-hmm. that we consume. Well, their their just way of living is so contrary to the American system, and I think it just it goes to show how monetized every aspect of American life is. Yeah. Where, and that's part of why doctors don't want to blatantly say, "Okay, let's 
eat better? What ingredients are like? What's in McDonald's? What's what's Monsanto doing? Um, no, I think I think doctors encourage eating better. They do, but, but they they're won't. Not, they won't blatantly tell you. Well, when 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 a, a, a there's a pandemic. Yeah, they're probably not going to say y'all need to stop being fat. <laughs> they're not going to say <laughs> but that. But I mean, if they had done, if if, but if when they, they had been allowed to do this stuff before there was a pandemic, a lot of people would have stronger immune systems. If there wasn't so many artificial colors and flavors and sweeteners and things that attack our systems, then maybe we would be a culture of people who, you know, people might still obviously get. COVID-19, True. but their their immune systems would be strong enough to fight it off as opposed to, you know, we're, we're given fillers and like, I mean, they, they have that McDonald's experiment where they have the burger that's been in a case for like 12 years and it hasn't changed color or molded or anything. You got Twinkies that bugs won't even eat. So that's, it's hard to think that I've, that Big Mac I had in third grade is still decomposing in my body. It's like it, still being broken down. It, it that's wild. Thanks. It probably is. It so, was good, though. That's I'm, like the last Big Mac I ever had, but it was good. I'm sure it was. I've only had one Big Mac in my Pickles. whole life. Ketchup. Lettuce, lettuce, tomato, lettuce, pickle. Lettuce, tomato. That's the thing about it. Put mustard on it. Isn't it in the special sauce? Sauce. Sauce. The sauce. Sauce. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I, I, I am a big Saucy. proponent. It took a lot to get him healthy, and he's still very far from healthy. Yo, all right, so I... um. I don't, I'm not a big junk eater. I used to be when I was younger, when I was like in my teen, you know, teenager. I mean, most teenagers don't eat very healthy. Uh, in my early 20s. I did. I, I would say it coincided with around the time I, I met Jessica and we started dating. We didn't have like a really long friendship period. We, we met, we did a couple group dates and then we were, we were in a relationship. Um, and she's right. She's, she's always been, as long as I've known her, she's always been super duper health, con- health conscious and um, very intentional about the things that she puts in her body and allows, you know, in, in her body. So, um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, so when, when I met, when I met her, so raunchy. <laughs> I, my bad. I was, I was trying to keep going. I was trying to, I was trying to power no, through it. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> I keep, was trying. Just, just. I was trying to keep going. Um, when, when I met her, I, I feel like I was on my way out of my my junk sweet phase or whatever, but she definitely had a, had a pretty big impact on me because I was spending all my time with her. She's always been the cook in the relationship, so she would have me over, she would cook, and it was always like, you know, you'd have organic, your, you'd have your or, organic, your meat, you know, your pro, your, you know, vegetables, green beans, carbohydrates, and vegetables and all that. No stuff. hydrogenated oils. No hydrogen, but that was where I was going. Is uh, my one. Oh. My one weakness was honey buns. I used to love honey. I, I, I still do. Like when my dad, my parents, our parents, my parents, but our parents come up uh, once, usually about once a week on average, and they'll hang out with the girls. And most times my dad, if he stops at the the convenience store to get himself a, a RC, he'll grab me a honey bun. And he'll you know, kind of like slide it to me when he comes in the house so Jessica doesn't see it. He'll be like, hey got you something and then he like it's like a little drug drug you know drug, drug exchange. exchange but the honey bun is this big but so honey bun, no, and, and, it's, and, it's no, got, and it's in plastic so it's all crackling uh, so I, I, I know she knows it. she I knows always, about it so and I, I i have she doesn't say anything i've let it i have my exceptions because i have my cheats too well but i i used to eat them in at, at a much higher frequency so i would go to the grocery store and i'd buy like the two you know, 12 pack or whatever of, of honey buns. And I'd come home and I would just feel that I would step in the house and I would just feel the judgment just smack me right in my face. Mm-hmm. Um, so that she's had a, a profound impact on, on my eating habits. So the point now where I really don't eat sweets, like we'll have, uh, we'll have friends or family bake things or, or Jess will go to the store and randomly and she'll buy like some, some ice cream sandwiches or whatever. And I really don't eat them. But when I, when I, get in the in the when i have my <laughs> my urge it's very strong and it, and it has to be satisfied like immediately uh the good news is that it's few and far between this is true but yeah. it's always inconveniently timed like i'll make enough because solace has a sweet tooth i have a sweet tooth and savi just like 
oh, is that food? So it really is edible. Um, oh, it's not edible. I'm still going to eat it anyway. So I'll like, we'll go through phases where, you know, I went through like this big baking phase. Our friend Deborah, who actually brought us a coconut cake. Shout out to Deborah. Huge shout out. She's my she's, big, my, my big uh, adopted sister. She's good. I have a lot of adopted sisters. So I'll probably um, reference in the course of this podcast. But um, Deborah actually, is goat. Yeah, she's, and she's a bomb. She, she got into baking through the pandemic, in the pandemic, and that kind of inspired me to start baking. So I, I'll cook. I love cooking because cooking I have control over. You still owe Alan a meal, by the way. Alan, ain't, I told him to tell me what he wanted, and he saying, hasn't said it. So You owe him a meal. There's an expiration date. I got you. I there's got you, not, Alan. No, it's, there's no there's expiration. Not, there's never. Standing, um, standing offer. I, side note. When I had to go to the ER and we needed someone, to, the ER would not let David in because we had both girls. They would let Savi in because I was nursing her. They would not let Solace in. And David was scrambling trying to find somebody who could get Solace home so that, you know, our parents could come and get her from our house. And Alan, like. My little, my big little. I feel like Alan gets brother. mentioned in every he episode. Does. Cause that's my guy, and it's so funny. We met in uh, We're in college. Get rolling credits, and then put his name. Yeah, we met in college. Uh, I think he came in my sophomore junior year, cause he's he's thirty, so it probably is, is my junior year. And um, no, my soft, some my son was my soft. It it's not important. Really I'm sorry. In, in college. And, you know, we just kind of, we hit it off right away. And the fact that we were both from the same area, you know, he, he grew up in Charlotte. I, I transferred down to Union County, North Carolina when I was, when I was 15, but from the same area, basically. Um, and we, uh, we, we took a hit, took a, took a liking to one another because we um, were interested in two shows that were fairly similar, Cheaters back in the day. You remember Joey, Joey Greco or whatever. He was a big fan of Cheaters. And I was a big fan of uh, To Catch a Predator with Chris Hansen <laughs> and little stale cookies he would have out for the for the dudes coming to try to holler. Yeah, holler at you know eleven year olds. So we um, <laughs> we had to do some project for a class we had. I don't know what it was, but we basically just played episodes of Cheaters <laughs> and To Catch a Predator, and we got like an A on it. It was the easiest project I've ever done in my life, but. Um, yeah, so we've known each other since since college, essentially, and I'm 33 now. And um, yeah, he he came through big time because you know it was it was like peak COVID, and I called a couple of people, and and some people uh, were you know just not willing to, and then some people were like, oh, I'm at work, I can't really get away. Uh, so I called him, and he was probably the in terms of distance, he was the furthest away from us where we were, uh, the hospital that we were at, and you know he was like, no questions asked, he was like, I'm there. Uh, he did say that Solace, our yeah. five-year-old, she said she talked his head off Poor Alan. the entire time. And, and that's why I owe him a meal. Uh, yeah. And then when my parents came <laughs> by the time, because I needed someone to pick Solace up, bring her to the house, uh, and then, you know, watch her until my parents could get and to our house. And he refused to leave my side. I was like, I, I will be yeah, okay. Just um, go home. And he was like, nah. And my parents are an hour away. So I was like, all right, I just need you to come pick Solace up, take her back to the house, chill for a little bit, like 20 minutes, probably tops. And my parents would be there. He said he was... <laughs> Said he was never so happy to hear a doorbell or something when my parents got there. His, <laughs> my mom said she walked in and Alan was like out the door her on the like, way out. Get this car seat out it's my like, car. I'm not built uh, for this. But yeah, I I do owe him a meal. Um, but we I think we were sorry. I'm I, I'm, I'm that's our my segue fault. was my deep. Bad. But Alan, Alan is goat and he's also gonna instill HBC HBCU pride into our girls. Mm -hmm. Um, and hopefully they more will. Morehead University, right, Jess? <laughs> <laughs> Look, that's a callback to another I, episode. I'm Jess, definitely Jess was trying to say more house. more house, and she said Morehead because we have a street in Charlotte. She's a fraud called Morehead. I didn't go to an HBCU. He's I, a fraud. I apologize. The, um, I, the irony of it, though, is that literally like two minutes before she misspoke, she was like, oh, I just love HBCU pride. And I just I'm such a fan. And I got love for all my sororities and fraternities. I didn't even say all that. I she do. Like, I do appreciate like, the fraternities uh, and sororities. She was like, we see you more, more head, <laughs> more head, more head <laughs> And I was and like, I'm wait, like, no. And I knew it right away. I was like, mm. sorry. Uh, I it, it, I felt it, but we really. If yeah. you Google the Google Maps, nah, we have more. Don't save her. It, it's ex, It's don't save her. Exit ten A off of seventy seven. <laughs> it's there, but yeah. More. So 
More Alan, college. I do owe you a meal. Whatever you want, let me know. But I prefer, I was saying I prefer cooking because you can control the elements of cooking. If it's too salty, add water, add acid, whatever. Baking is too scientific for me. And people don't give bacon the respect it deserves. It's very scientific. And, you know, once it's in the oven, you you lose control of it. You can't yeah. you can't change it. And a lot of items are raw. Like you put egg yolks in it, so like raw eggs and and stuff. So you can't necessarily taste it to confirm. But Deborah got into baking, which inspired me to try baking. So she put a, she got on into cinnamon rolls, which got me into cinnamon rolls, which gave me extra rolls. Um, that. Oh, Bliss. it was bad. I we were making, I was making cinnamon rolls like Amazing. once a week. Why? I don't know. Um, because I'm, it's a pandemic and you just need something to do. So I would make the cinnamon rolls and account for myself. And then I would account for Solace. And then, you know, Savi will take, take a piece and then she'd probably like leave it on the floor and then find it later. And so David wasn't even like in sense of that. He, no one even knew he lived here when it came to. When it came to those. And then all of a sudden he was like, oh, I'm going to get one of these cinnamon. Or there'd be like, it was always the last like four. And like, okay, so I'll get two. I'll get two. I'll end up splitting one. With Quiet so I was getting two. Because. <laughs> because. Second smallest person she, now. She, 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 just, she just deserves two. And then David was like, oh, let me get one. Let me hold one of these cinnamon rolls. And I'm like, what do you well, mean? I don't, talk, I don't even talk like that. <laughs> Last week you were all like, oh, you know what? Nah. And he was like, let me hold one of these cinnamon rolls. Like, if you hold a cinnamon roll, like, you can't hold a cinnamon roll. <laughs> like, you, you don't borrow a, a let cinnamon me, let roll. Let me hold it right quick. So I'd be like, I put it back. I feel like, bruh, we didn't even count you in the city. Like, I didn't account for you. Like, these are my calories. Now you're, you're, this is a deficit from me that you're taking away. But yes, he's gotten really good. There was one time he went to the store to go buy syrup. And we have a dollar. We we live in the, the city country is what I call it. Uh, because I'm just a city girl. And if I am more than five minutes from a grocery store, I'm in the country. I grew up in Worcester, Massachusetts. Worcester, I'm a city, I'm a city girl. War town. Um, so he went to the Dollar General, which if you try to live a healthy life, like Dollar General is never, <laughs> never yeah. a store you should try Losing to buy battle. food from. Um, so yeah. he's going to buy syrup for Solace because unless you have a river of syrup on pancakes or waffles, Solace is not going to eat it. So he picked up the syrup and saw that it had high fructose corn syrup. Now I'm at home and I already know that he's coming back with some high fructose corn. So I'm like, I will give an exception this time. And next time I go to the store, I'm going to buy maple syrup. But he read the label, saw that it was high fructose corn syrup, and took himself 10 minutes up the road to Food Lion and bought some grade A maple syrup. And he said, Jess, you know how I know I've grown? I could have bought the high fructose corn syrup. It was cheaper too. It was. So you know, you already know it was a struggle for me. I was like, because hmm. he's he's straight king cheap. Hmm. He they are went. they are young, so he, it's not like it'll be as damaging. As no, if they it were is older. damaging. This is the as, development. I said as damaging. This is the development of their system. So I right. I very much so It'll realized right. they got time. I realized that I have I have infiltrated him, and I I have t he's not he's not perfect. No, because I'm still I still shop by price, not by health standards <laughs> and he'll still randomly come home with like a box of Krispy Kreme like he goes through uh, these Krispy Kreme phases and it's like bro Krispy Kreme is just air it's just <laughs> it's not even a real donut and I know this too I'm like, I'm like oh I shouldn't I really shouldn't but he still does it and I get so upset but you know it's progress it's the little things the little things that 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 improve but we wanted I wanted us and it's going to be oh, brief. Oh, yeah, what we actually really want to talk what about. we really want to talk about. Because we've um, been r literally rambling. For we have. And maybe this should just be a, a ramble episode. Like, just sometimes yeah. you just talk. Well, I already said in the first segment what we were going to be talking about. You did. About. We talked about, and I mean, it's still on health. We talked about people's fear for doctors, medical professionals' fear for saying the wrong thing. And this is a very real thing in America. I don't know about other countries. I can't speak on you guys, but at least y'all, <laughs> you, <guys. laughs> um, you people, I can't speak for you. Um, you people. 
but at least in America, I find that doctors are very fearful of saying straight out like, yo, you're overweight. You need to do this. I, I mean, agree. Some, most some most are. doctors usually stray from saying, yo. Yeah. There, there are some urban doctors out there. They, they, get, a, they get a little ratchet. Oh, no, um, that's, that's, that's actually that. misuse of the word urban, but yeah, we can, that's another episode. Uh, but there are some doctors who will probably straight up be like, yo, um, you need to do this. You know what? My OBGYN, I love her. And I'm not going to say her name well, I had, because I, I don't want people to go to her and, and take up more appointment time. Yeah, but I, she, would t- she would straight up say. Well, I had yeah. a physical recently for the first time in like. Like 15, Ever fifteen years? <laughs> it's been <laughs> no. It's probably it's been, been like, like six years. It's been like seven, seven or eight. And um, you know, went through the. It was I was it was a, my first time, so it was you know new patient doctor kind of getting to know you, fill out all these questions. Answer Did she bring and, the paper and the pen and write everything down? Um, I don't know. I don't remember. I okay. wasn't really. Never mind. I, really, I I set up the appointment for him. Yeah. So I go in, and I and and also for anyone who knows me or follows me, I'm I've. Uh, become a pretty big uh, cigar smoker, so uh, to I, say I, I smoke a couple times a week. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Although it used to be much more frequent, I've I've toned it down since yeah, because I, to, I was I had to say something. I was being I was being lectured, but uh, I said she said, "Oh, I see you you smoke." And I was like, "Yeah." She was like, "What do you, what do you do?" I was like, "Well, I smoke cigars, you know, two to two to five a week, roughly on average." She was like, "Oh, all right. Well, you know." Stuff's not good for you. <laughs> like, yes, Doc, I'm very aware, but I appreciate you, uh, you know, doing your, you know, your your duty, doctoral duty, I guess, to to remind me that I am risking my health, both mm-hmm. immediate and long term, by smoking cigars. But I'm gonna smoke them anyway. So continue. I'm, I Cigar just, culture. It's I fantastic. just need to take a moment. It's fantastic. I can't really say much because every bluest moon i will um i'll hit up a cigar i'll, I'll hit up a lounge with this is fantastic and i you know i know this isn't really what we're supposed to talk about but it's just so much of a an experience like the cigar itself is probably like half of the total experience of smoking a cigar it's you know f- you know picking picking a, a stick and you smell it you, know, you kind of roll it you get kind of get to know it a little bit um, you, you know, you pick whether you want, you know, like a mild, uh, uh, stick or, or like a, like something more bold. What do you want to pair it with? Do you want whiskey? Do you want coffee? Where are you going to sit? What are you going to do? And then if you're going out, you know, you just, it's, it's one of the, going to a cigar lounge is probably one of the more welcoming atmospheres I've ever been a part of aside I from like, like a barber, like a, a black barbershop. Um, you walk in, it's literally like. Uh, just uh, all, like a twenty four seven, or not twenty four seven, but uh, however, wherever the out working hours or operation hours are, just like networking space. Because you go in, and you know, somebody's like, "Oh, what are you smoking?" And you, you, know, you tell them what it is, and oh, you like that? Oh, it's the first time. Like, what do you smoke? And then it just the conversation evolves from there. So, um, I've never been in a cigar uh, lounge or, or environment where there are other cigar smokers in my midst where I felt unwelcomed or uncomfortable. So it's it's pretty awesome. What about that one in Florida? Um, it no, was it, that one guy. Who it, was, it was it was a dude who was uh, he was. You know, it was, <laughs> I'm not gonna say what I was about to say. It was just you, know, you can't. There's always gonna be those. It was Florida. Those outliers. We'll we'll leave it at that. There's always gonna be those outliers. So and, you know what. But to the do. but any other time I've been to that lounge, you know they they treated me with you know with, with great hospitality. So yeah, I was just one. I, I was just one person. I'm one very person. much so one person. My husband has <laughs> we're just gonna we're gonna skip over that Can we go over from no, i thought these were done we oh, had an yeah, inauguration my bad. My bad. um my husband is very much so he has, oh my gosh <laughs> oh. he has evolved a lot from the david i met in 2010 to the david we have here in 2021 um there were some moments where I was like, yo, me and this dude, like, we just on such opposite oh, ends, stick in the mud. ends of the spectrum. I mean, there would be times we would go out and he would. <laughs> no, no, no. We ain't got to do this. We ain't got to do this. No, I go, go say, ahead. I had to say. We would be like, oh, let's, let's go get something to eat. Cool. So I get all. And back when I was a lot younger, I was like 
always dolled up. I, I used to work as a pro- promotional model. So anytime I was going out, like I was my brand. So I always presented myself. And that's really just how I was raised. Like I was always, you know, dress up. You never know what each situation you're going to get in. So I dress up and then here comes, <laughs> here comes David in basketball shorts, socks up to his calves and slides and like a t-shirt, some rando t-shirt. And I'm like, bruh, really? R- really? So there were many moments where I was just like, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't. I just don't know if this is going to yeah. work because we we were so opposite. But in I guess what you would say the difficulty of marriage and relationships. <laughs> yeah, I brought it back up. We have we. It's almost like the spectrum was yay wide, and we have equally evolved to a central point. Like I, I've noticed, I'm a lot more of a homebody now. Um, I don't mind being home. Like I don't mind not going out. But I, rem- I think one time, oh, and I'm probably going to get in trouble for this with somebody. I used to like hang out with people like when we go out and drink, you know, oh, here's, here's, here's a menthol, whatever, a cigarette. And I'd like take a, take a, take a puff, you know, puff, here you go, take it back. Um, but I really had a thing for black and mild. If Excuse I, me? Oh, you knew this, stop. Um, if I had been drinking, something about the smell oh, of you was, out, you was out there in the world. Being worldly. Something about the smell of a wine, black and mild, just, I, it was my kryptonite. I'd be like, yo, let me, let me just, let me. I don't real, even, I don't even quick. know who oh, you are right oh, now. Oh, hush, you smoke like ours. So, uh, and he used to be so prudishly judgmental. So if he found out I did something, he'd be like, oh my gosh, like, I can't believe I'm with this woman. You're just so, just. I'm just so disappointed in you. I'm like, bro, like I'm, I'm 22. Like, yeah, I'm, I'd be I'm, like, peasant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm still like, like I'm, I'm living life and I'm learning things and I'm doing things. But he would judge. He was so judgmental. So the fact, like, I think if I went back to like 2011 and spoke with old you and old me, they'd be like, there's no way David is smoking cigars. But it's, it's drinking, really drinking whiskey drinking. and bourbon. George drink, drink, yeah, drink, drink Because I've worked in alcohol for essentially all of our relationship in some capacity. So, like, I was working for Anheuser Busch, and I'm like, yo, I'm I'm cool. I got a corporate card. We got free drinks. We get Bud, Stella, whatever we want. And he'd be like, no, but no, let me get, let I me love, get that Capri Sun. Can I, can I get a, Can I get a <laughs> sweet tea? Just in, in the lemon on the side. I'm like, and I'm like, we're young. Let's let's live. So it's it's kind of annoying that he's now in it because of like we could have been we could have been tearing up the streets so, and this is uh, we're gonna i guess we'll have to do cancel culture for our last segment <laughs> um but a lot of it is uh growing up so uh i i, I didn't live in you know a boarding school by any means but you know my parents were fairly strict on the things that they did not want us uh, associated with that they did not want us to be um, exposed to I'm an African one of them, kid. <laughs> one of them, yeah, but you know, you know y'all Stop. Africans, y'all Africans, you know, some other stuff. So, uh, you know, uh, n- no guns in the house. You know, my, my dad is, was, was a strong advocate for, for, for no guns in, in the house and period. Like he doesn't, um, think that they should exist. Like, and you know, I can, I can see that. Not that that's not what we're talking about, but, um, another thing was, was drinking. I never saw my parents drink ever. And, like, I don't know the last time I, I saw my dad ever drink. My mom, I and she's got noticed, she began, she began buck wild. So I, 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 I guess all the, you know, she got an empty nest. She figured she I'd can be, let I'd her be, hair I'd down. Be slipping mom um, but so a lot of that just kind of stuck with me as, as I, uh, as I grew up, you know, I, I didn't drink in, in school and, and sneak at, at parties or whatever and drink like most of my friends did. And most kids do, you know, in their, in their late teens. And even when I got to college, I didn't have, I didn't drink until I think I got a roommate. Um, AJ, my we 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 roomed up together. We didn't hey, really. AJ. Sup, AJ and Megan. And Megan, um, we didn't know each other before. We I think we had work study together, but we had decided that we didn't want to live in in the in the the dorms. So we um, decided to link up. And I think the first drink that I had was like a Bud Light. You know, he, yes, he, he drank that, he, he drank Bud Lights. So so much so that when I went out for my twenty first birthday, my brother and had some of his army friends come down to and Sabrina and cousin Sabrina. And, and cousins Keith and Kenny in Charlotte, we went out for my twenty first, and you know they showed me a good time. So we hit the first spot, and um, 
you know, it was like bartender was like, you know, what you want? I was like, was like, yo, <laughs> <laughs> let me get a Bud Light. <laughs> and dude was like, okay, why are you acting like? <laughs> like, all right, so he gave me Bud Light. So then, cousin Sabrina showed up, and she was like. David, you don't want no real drink. <laughs> <laughs> I always remember that. I was like, you know, I'm just you know some warming up. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but yeah, that definitely, definitely come a long way. But um, before we run out of time, let's go ahead and take one last break, and then we'll we'll wrap up. I think with cancel culture. All right. So, for some how going to segue from we're really my twenty first really not my twenty first birthday use- and drinking Bud Light. No, we have to go to, back. So all of this to tie up the fact that I do appreciate his evolution, but I also acknowledge that my husband has like a mild, I don't know if a, if there's like an addiction trait, but he's got it. So whenever David gets passionate about something, it's it's like a daily ritual. So I appreciate that he like smokes cigars now because now we're like we're like that cool we we, we cool um i'm cool you okay. look good though calm down you fine calm down because i feel like i've influenced who uh, oh a girl lot, a lot of who you are <laughs> so fine please stop, please stop. yeah because um, i remember i threw him a yeah, surprise girl. party for his 30th birthday and we um it was back when i you know i had connects i was working i was working in the world That's industry short for connections so uh i got us a vip table at one of the clubs in charlotte and you know we got hookah and i remember like everyone else was like hitting hookah i was like he's not gonna hit the hookah and he hit the hookah and i was like oh only after i realized that i was i had the thing <laughs> put on the wrong way <laughs> so my uh our, our kids godparents happened they they came into town at the time they were living in they atlanta did. so Hi, they, they made the trip Amanda. love y'all and um amanda kind of just reached over and she readjusted the. oh i didn't even know that yeah happened. and i don't only a couple of people saw it um omar and amanda being two of them or the two maybe uh, and maybe good. somebody else saw That's it so yeah, she, she, but she she wasn't you know she didn't try to embarrass me she just kind of reached over and they flipped that adjusted That's it for good. me she, i was like she, i was like oh it's like i knew that they're they're that. amazing people and they're that that conversation's for a whole other day but yeah i i definitely do appreciate the evolution of my husband he's now this like this dude who's down for for anything because when david and i first i'm i'm a dancer like if you have music i'm gonna dance it show like it's in our kids blood like i come from dancing people um and our kids dance like intoxicated dancing people <laughs> okay we just like to celebrate we're not oh, always is that is that is that the <laughs> we like to celebrate the blessing of life okay let us do that is that how y'all spend it we celebrate god's god's okay. the god's giving to us because all the stories i ever hear about is the you there's always at least one drunk uncle <laughs> I mean, everybody's it, stories has a drunk uncle. Like, if true. you don't have a drunk uncle in your story, you're, you're yeah, just... Yeah, that's true. It's I just, guess. It's, it's, it's not... You're that's not... You fair. haven't lived. You that's haven't fair. lived appropriately. That's fair. So, um, I love to dance. Like, it's one of those, like, I can watch a dancing show and, like, I'm dancing. The girls dance. So, when we first started dating, David was not a dancer. And I was like, I don't know how I'm going to live a non-dancing life. Like, these are literal conversations I've had with myself and friends. Like, I'm like, I am a dancer. I'll be holding, I'll be holding the wall up. He has evolved. Like, I remember we went to Mexico for... Mexico. Uh, Mexico. Pardon. Um, for my, for our friend Lindsay and her husband Percy's wedding and David, there's this picture. He's got like a cigar in his, in his mouth and he's doing like a fist pump and he's on his phone. And it's like, it's so fun to see the evolution of who he is. Like, and he and I were getting it on the dance floor. Um, there was one picture, like we were dancing so much. Like at one point we didn't even know where Silas was. Like it was a contained area. So we knew she was safe. Like she was doing her own dancing, but we were just so into the groove and that's like i remember thinking like wow this is my husband now like this is not someone like i did not marry a person who danced like this dude did not dance but he has like he's over here dancing he's got a, a cigar in his mouth he's, he's taking <laughs> shots of don julio and mango four um, I took not, four shots of don julio that drunk, night so we'll have to discuss on another podcast why um resort all-inclusive resort alcohol is not the same as regular alcohol. Um, But I've had so many moments within our not difficult marriage from my side where I have seen him evolve from this like 
prudish choir. I don't say choir. Church no. boy. No. <laughs> and you weren't even a church boy, no. but you were just so prudish up to this man who's like, I, 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 I'm going to get down with the get down. Well, I mean, if you watch Snowfall, he's like, how? <laughs> <laughs> No. no, 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 we're not, we're not like that serious. No. He's, he's not doing all that, but, um, he's just evolved. So, you know, he does, he does go hard on the cigar, but it, there's a part of it that drives me mad. And there's a part of it that really fascinates me, all the knowledge that he's acquired. And we do have fun times. Like when the girl, like there was one time this summer, uh, the girls had gone or two times, actually, we'd done like a date. And the girls had gone to their grandparents and we went to, you know, our local cigar lounge. And there is a beautiful vibe uh, that cigar lounges give where it's just. And, it wasn't, and that, the times that we went, it was like early in the day. So it wasn't even really yeah, full. It's like brunch. So here I am smoking a cigar and, you know, sipping a mimosa. Don't know if that's customary, but I was doing it. Um, and it was just it was really nice. And just, you know, seeing his knowledge, like the knowledge which he's absorbed. That's something I will give him credit for when he gets interested in something. He he researches it like he's like a grad student just over here like this is my dissertation and he ends up knowing everything that there is to know so he's just like all cigar knowledgeable and you know cut this and light this and you know inhale here and, and exhale and puff 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 so um so, no you don't you don't inhale you puff 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 you don't inhale. But you don't pass. So I don't want anybody thinking that I, I said no. told anyone I'm just, ever I'm to just inhale. saying words. I'm just rambling. It's Jessica. It's Jessica's I'm just rambling. But yeah, so, you know, the evolution of David has been has been nice. I mean, even look at it. He's got locks. Like, I don't think at any point in the existence I would have never, of David. I would have never have, have thought that I would have dreadlocks and, or be and, interested in, in having and here them. Like, is. if you see these pictures behind us, this My, one, our, our clean right cut. Here. I got, a little, I got a little fade. Looking like an usher at church. Tight fade. It was, it was clean. Tight Telling people fade. where to sit. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I mean. It's an evolution. It, that's what it's all about. I mean, if you got the right, if, you, if, you're, if you're with the right person, it's, uh, it's easy. It's easier, I'll say, to, uh, to make those changes because they inspire you to make them. They encourage you to make them and not necessarily always consciously. Sometimes it's just through osmosis, just being around them and. You know, uh, you know, uh, uh, escorting them or, or joining them. Like when she w when she worked for Anheuser and a lot of these beverage companies, she would hold events at bars and pubs and whatnot. And I would go along one because the food was free, so I didn't have to. You know, and the have, drinks. And the drinks. So well, the drinks wasn't really the main draw. It was just free food. You know, I good had, free food. I had to spend my own money. You know, it's it a perk. But I would, you know, just be around the the environments, and I would, you know, say, hey, you know. It's, which isn't so bad. And the more you're around something, obviously the more comfortable you get with it. And I figured, you know, if this sort of life, if this line of work, if this industry, you know, is that important to Jessica, you know, I, I need to make myself, you know, a little bit more comfortable with it. If not, you know, dabble in a little bit and I dabbled and now I ended up just jumping in <laughs> instead of dipping my yeah, toes in. Now he goes harder in. than me. Cannonball. Over uh, here getting and, like select bourbons and whiskeys and, yeah. and schooling me on stuff like like this is my world. Yeah, it's um, it's been interesting. It has been for for sure. So, so now that we're over an hour, we are. And this, maybe this now is, we can get to what we're supposed to talk about. Oh, we're still going. I I just feel like we should we should at least touch on it if not and maybe continue next week okay. for the next episode. So because I feel like now. We've just been doing, we've just been lying to anyone who's watching this. Like, oh, well, I want to see their thoughts on cancel culture. Yeah, cancel. And now it's like, we're not, nah, we're not talk, we just, we're we not just talked talk about, about David it. and how he, he was Urkel and now he's Stefan smoking cigars. But I did want to talk about cancel culture. We, we wanted to talk about cancel culture because, she, she wanted to talk about um, Cancel culture is I real. I just work here. She you just work here. I'm just, I just to show up and, and press buttons. That's all I do. Uh, cancel culture is real. And we have such a hypersensitive society that you say the wrong thing and you're just, you're done. And the first incident of cancel culture Actually, maybe there are two incidents of cancel culture that I kind of remember would probably be the first one would be uh, Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky. 
and how they tried to cancel the president. And somehow to this day, like they still try to bring it back up. But Bill, like something about Bill is like, yo, I'm uncancelable. I'm just, I'm just here. Uh, I'm Bill Clinton. Uh, and you love me. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> Stop. Stop it. Um, but the second, re- I think the really big, and I'm, I'm unaging myself because I feel like old people say I'm aging myself, but I'm not old. Uh, I'm unaging myself. I'm revealing my youth. Uh, that I really, really remember is I miss. When mm. he when he yeah. dropped, and y'all are gonna have to forgive me for what I'm gonna say after this, after after this, when he dropped that nappy headed hose. First of all, I will say I was I was calling all of my friends <laughs> nappy headed hoes, and 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 they were calling me a nappy headed hoe. We were all just everybody was just. <laughs> Sorry. That was just a hilarious statement. The comments made by Jessica belong to her and herself. They are not indicative of the views of Rush Vibes. I may have been a freshman in college or a senior in high school. I was in that in that range, uh, I believe. But one, Nappy Headed Ho was like, a, it was a pretty good just catchphrase. But he was the first person that I I can say, looking back on history, the history that I've lived, who genuinely was canceled. People were like, oh, "This is not okay. You can't say this. That's wrong." Like just and and it was so, it was so it was just funny. Like I, we were say I was saying it in the, at home. I was say, I was texting it to people on the flip phone, and and that takes a lot. That's a lot of letters to like. To this, type is, out. this is me distancing uh, myself uh, from you. What was that? The QWERTY keyboard on the Nokia? Whatever. Um, so he's the first person. And it was recently, he may have died last year or the year before, that he died. And someone was saying that, oh, he like was still on the radio. And I was like, wait, I thought we canceled Imus. Like, I thought his first name is Don, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I thought he was done. I thought after he said nappy headed hoe, like he one, I didn't know who he was before. He said nappy headed hoe and then he said nappy headed hoe and everyone was like, Oh my gosh, like this is uproar. Mm, can't say hoe. Um, or nappy headed. And it it, it it was a big deal. It, and I think th- and this is where cancel culture is so tricky because I think it was something he just said, but because you don't know someone's heart, you don't know if he wa- if the mal- if there was a malicious intent behind it. So he got canceled. I think he lost his radio syndication. But then you know he he recently died, and I guess he was still on the radio up until he died. So there was a time between when that scandal fell that he was able to get back into it. And there are so many people who you know they'll say something offensive, and you just want like. You think this is this is the end of them. I remember, you know, your boy, um, we were just talking about him. Bill Maher, he had offended some people. and oh, Bill Maher is always offending people. Yeah, but he had said something <laughs> like extreme back in the early thousands, I believe. Uh, yeah, uh, so he, he got banned. He had a show uh, Politically Incorrect. Uh, uh, so he was had, on ABC or something? Yeah, it was on ABC. And he had Dinesh. Shauza, I think is his name, on. And they were talking about it was it was post 9-11, like relatively soon after and um bill was basically saying that um he was saying that they in terms of i believe al-qaeda they they are not or bin laden and his people i believe it's al-qaeda was the name name Mm -hmm. of his his uh cell um they weren't coward because they were basically putting themselves on planes with the intention of, of, of suicide Sorry. bombs for the, for in their mind, the, the greater cause. So he was saying, you know, I'm paraphrasing obviously, but like we're, we're the, we're the cowards, but they're not the cowards we are. And you know, the way we lob missiles and, and bombs and things like that. So, uh, needless to say, ABC was like, yeah, bro, we don't need you to clock out. <laughs> and that's how he ended up on HBO. So yes, that's what he said. And, but also most recently he, um, he got in trouble with, uh, with, with, with black folks because he, he was... I'm sorry. To, he, I'm, he made a joke and uh, or tried to make a joke and basically <laughs> referred to himself as a, as a house Negro and, and used the other word, the, the, the forbidden word. And um, he got in, a, got in a lot of hot water. But uh, he's, he's still around, still kicking. So. He is. So, so 
when you think about cancel culture, you have it's it's almost like some people can survive. It's, it's almost as if cancel culture is temporary for some people or some instances, and it's long term for others. Some people, I see them losing their entire career. Like you got Becky from um, Full House. You know the college admission scandal. She. People don't want to touch her and Massimo. I'm sure Target has probably let him go. But then you got Felicity Huffman, who I heard recently is working on either a TV show or a movie. So it's like she's able to make a little bit of a comeback. But Aunt Becky, Lori Laughlin, Lofton, Laughlin, Lori, Aunt Becky. Um, she, people are like, we're not here to mess Baxter. with her. The Baxter. Uh, so it's, it's just interesting cancel culture and what we we as a society choose to forgive we as an entity a society you me us everybody uh what we choose to forgive and what people don't so i think i I think one it depends on the person uh it depends on the act in terms of what they've done or what they've said uh and i think it just depends on what's the the top headline in the country at the moment honestly like how bored people are well yeah just you know if there's if there if it's a slow news day or there's nothing there's no like war or or, you know big huge bill being debated throughout congress if there's nothing none of that going on and something happens you know and everybody's looking at it uh you know everybody's going to respond a little differently than if it just kind of you know makes page what is it page six um i think is, is the saying page six news so um i know my I think my earliest uh, remembrance of cancel culture where I actually knew what was going on uh, was ironically, it happened on a TV show that I did not watch, nor did I really care about. I still don't to this day. I've I've never seen a full episode or have paid attention to a full episode of it, but it was Isaiah Washington uh, when he had the the outburst on set. uh, Where he is, I think, alleged to have used um, the the F word. F. A, a, a gay slur essentially and he literally was like just gone <laughs> like he was off he was off Grey's Anatomy and like he really didn't do a whole lot of um big projects that that would have, mm-hmm. have garnered a lot of attention um he and did he, he did such he, potential too I mean he's he's a very talented actor and you know he did uh Blue Caprice which was a DC um, sniper. yeah the, um retelling of, of the DC sniper uh, which I lived through. I was living in Northern Virginia at the time of that. And that was just a crazy time. They shut schools down and closed down malls and everything. It was wild. It was crazy. Wild times. I, fr- I, I kind of, I mean, I was in Massachusetts, so I don't think it yeah. was that. It was, it was wild. And we had chief Charles Moose, <laughs> chief Moose. Um, it was, <laughs> that was his name. That was the last name was Moose. Chief Charles, Charles. Moose. Was he like a big guy? Did he live up nah, to the name he was, Moose? He was average height or short. He was kind of oh. stocky though. Chief Moose. Um, moose? Or I think it's stocky. Huh? Aren't Moose? Meese? Moose. We're going to keep moose. going. We moose going. is the singular um, and the plural. And then, you know, he's um, recently he was on, he's, he's on P Valley. But do you know that Grey's Anatomy did bring him back for a couple episodes? Oh, did they? He did come back. Oh, okay. Back but when he, I was but really he, big. But he lost his recurring role, though. Oh, yeah. He, he definitely yeah. did, which was unfortunate. Um, yeah. But... Um, you bringing him up, I wonder if cancel culture has racial bias. I think I there's wonder. definitely, that's why I said it depends on who it is and what they said. Because um, like Bill Maher, for example, he's pretty liberal mm-hmm. um, and, you know, he's on HBO and, you know, he has a lot of, of guests who come through or of, of you know, they, they lean left. For the most part, although he does have conservatives who will come on his show. Um, and I think left. because of that, and I think that's why he was able to survive, you know, the, the, the N word and what he said. Uh, and then the, the, the following week he had like Ice Cube on there and he had uh, Michael Eric Dyson come on. I think on we and, watched the episode where he yeah. said Edward and I didn't even, I didn't even think anything of it. I, I was just like, okay. You know, it, it brings up. he said he's a house. <laughs> it bring, yeah, and I can't remember what the question was. Um, and he was like, "What? Come on, I'm a house." Um, and I want to say, I think I chuckled at it. I'm so, we all did because it was just kind of yeah, like, it was, like it, was, it was funny. Like, come on, Bill. But I think 
it, it speaks to a, a bigger issue. And I think uh, in, in Dave Chappelle's, one of his, his most recent specials, and when he, um, I think it's eight minutes, 45 seconds, the mm-hmm. George Floyd special is, I think at the end, he said like, this is one of the last um, safe spaces for comedians um, left. Um, or one of the, the safe spaces for like just honest dialogue or for, for people to, to take chances. But it's not uh, safe. It, it isn't. It isn't. Like I said, it depends on who you are. Um, but I remember you brought up Dianimus. Um, one of my brother Daniel's favorite comedians to listen to was a comedian by the name of Patrice O'Neill, who since passed away uh, several several years ago. But he's he's a big. He was a big black guy, and he would actually defended Imus. He said Imus shouldn't have lost his job because he felt like he was trying to be funny. So his his mindset is is, mm. is that comedians and and comics should have. Uh, the opportunity to try to be funny yeah. and anything you never really know when a joke is going to land and when it isn't so many things you know come into play is the, the audience and then the delivery and you know there's just so many factors that come into play but he said funny people should have the space to try to be funny and sometimes if a joke doesn't land and some people take offense to it well that means it just wasn't funny let them move on to to try to do something else so um it's just interesting you know when comedians try to get you know, face the 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 ugly um, thing that is that is cancel culture. You know, should should they? You know, should they? Should there be sort of a free speech that exists within uh, stand up comedy or, mm-hmm. or 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 just comedy in general? Um, and you know, you never know. It just it really honestly just depends on who it is and, and the public opinion on. It. Like, I mean, let's be real. I mean, you you don't hear of that many um, people with like liberal affiliations, you know, being canceled for the most part or being yeah, forced to, to go away. Normally it's, it's more people who would be conservative, like, um, like Isaiah Washington, like he recently came out, <laughs> come out. He recently, uh, announced that, you know, he was a Republican. <gasps> oh, you didn't I, know that? No. I mean, I, and I, I'm not, yeah. my gasp is, I, <laughs> he's allowed to be Republican because Colin Powell is Republican. No, not anymore. I think, I think he, I don't know. It was on. I I, I reserve the right. Headline. I reserve the right to retract this, um, and I'm pretty sure I saw it on Facebook. Which one is already like is already risky, uh, but I'm pretty sure he said he was no longer a Republican. Oh, and yeah. now is it because of the? I, I think it's the direction of the party under okay under, under Trump. Um, so they've that's interesting. Pandered, pandered that he's a him. he's a Republican. But I, I guess I wonder if cancel culture, ha, when I had stated, posed my first question or my initial question in terms of race, do you find that, let's, that, and again, we're, we're black, so we can't, we can't reference other races. Um, but I find that black people are more forgiving. Oh, it's, yeah. I would say so. Because there, there have. Uh, they tend to be a little I bit don't more know what she so. did, but I know Whoopi Goldberg was canceled, and there, are, there's a good population of 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 black people who are not a fan of Whoopi. Mm. Um, again, I don't know what she did. I'll have to, you know, look into that. But it would have been good to do before we started recording. Anyway, I personally like Whoopi. I think she's. I think right, she's. Cool. She's cool people. Um, but he got. She's 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 been canceled apparently in the black community. Um, and she has actually talked about how she like it's Barbara Walters that's essentially part of why she's working again. So I uh, and she's been on the View for many many years. I I appreciate her opinion, but I do find that and it could be you know a generational thing, but. You know, maybe we are more forgiven, I, or it could be a personality thing. Like I, I feel like I'm, I'm usually temporarily offended, and you know, you could say something, and I'm like, okay, and then I, I'm kind of over it later. I, I'm not really going to dwell on it, but you know, there's something. Unless somebody says marriage is difficult, and then it's a look, lingering, it's look, a lingering thing. Look, that's a that's a trigger. The, that's a trigger statement. Trigger. All right, let's, let's wrap up in like five minutes. Uh, but I do, I do wonder because you know, like we were just addressing, um, your boy Mar said, you know, I'm a house blank, and we, I remember us because that was the time where David actually used to 
watch it with me and now he just watches it on his own because he just doesn't care about watching things with me and that's another episode about how david um watches things without me how he how he cheats on me with shows um is everything in the prior two segments just went out the window it's <laughs> like it's like a an entertainment threesome that we have and then he like segues and and does it by himself and then that's that's when it becomes right, cheating. Let's, let's anyway but we watched that episode live with bill maher but not with bill maher but of bill maher and i thought nothing of the statement and you know people got mad later and even after the fact i was still like Okay, because I I think I understood the context that he was making the reference, but I guess I wonder if it's if it's also if cancel culture fits certain personalities. Like, are there some personalities that are just more vilifying that want to make someone a villain and you know absolutely remove them from society or their presence in society, or is it just you know? Like you said, where, you know, the news cycle, there's not much happening right now. Like, we have a normal president. We we don't... So, if you do something offensive, like, okay, let's just attack you and, and you know, take you out. Yeah. Yeah, I think there are definitely... I don't know, don't know that there's one direct formula for for who's allowed to be canceled and, and who, who gets canceled and, and how long do they stay canceled. I think, and honestly, just it just depends on a number of, of variables and it's kind of hard to really to say if somebody's able to come back from something or if they won't be because there are some people who've come back from some really damning things monica um, Lewinsky wrote a book and then there are some people who, who who haven't been able to come back from what would may be perceived to be relatively minuscule things so i think that's something that we'll talk about on our we'll kind of lead in with our next episode kind of wrap it up because we're we're definitely near the yeah this the was long of, we yeah, had a was, lot this was a long one um, so, uh, for anyone who stuck through it this long, we would love to know your opinion on cancel culture and just, how do you feel about it? What are your general overall thoughts on it? You know, drop a, drop a comment down low or, uh, feel free to, you know, shoot us some messages on, on social media or post, you know, on our, on our pages or whatnot. So we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Thank you to everyone who's, uh, who commented on the marriage is marriage difficult episode? We had some some great comments going. Thank you, everyone great who conversations with me. going on in in the comments on on YouTube, and then we also had just had some really good discussions in in real life. So it's it's a the question probably could have been phrased a little differently. Um, I think it may have been a little too too binary, but you know I, I, we still got a lot of great organic uh, conversation out of it. So I think it it served its purpose. But as usual, we we appreciate everyone who tuned in, who downloaded and listened, anyone who's uh, recently subscribed to the channel or the podcast or liked us on Facebook or followed us on Instagram. We appreciate you guys calling you the Vibe Tribe. We love y'all. And um, please continue to share this with anyone who you feel could could get some value from it. And I'm going to keep asking you guys, leave a review please, on your podcast platform. Um, cause like I said, that helps with discovery and it helps people, people find us. Um, we've got two as of right now, we've got 10 ratings total, but only two reviews. So if we get some more reviews, that'd be and awesome. And I think they're all family members. Um, no, Jarrell left, left one. Um, Jarrell's well, a family Jarrell member. Jarrell is family. You're right. My bad. I love, <laughs> my bad. I'm gonna ah, I'm cut that. Jarrell, you my guy. You know you my that's guy. That's one of the more Circle. head statements. <laughs> Circle. Uh, connect with us on social media. The graphics should have, uh, should have popped up at the beginning of the video, but just in case we'll, we'll pop them up again. And make sure, you're, make sure you're subscribed to us on, on YouTube if you're watching. And you can definitely support us. Uh, the, 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 the channel, we're on Cash App, uh, dollar sign, R-U-S-H-D-V-I-B-E-S. So we will get be... get a P.O. box. We will be back. Uh, uh, we're next, back in the day. And we, like, will be back, box. we will be back next week <laughs> um, with a brand new episode of Rush Vibes. Uh, we hope everybody is staying safe doing well it's still a pandemic so be sure to wear your mask socially distance and wash your hands until next time i'm dave i'm jess we out we love y'all bye vibe tribe see you next time stop me now i don't care way too fucking stop me now stop me now stop me now yeah i don't care way too fucking stop me now